Next, we shall prove the homotopy invariance. property of the Ramco homology. So let's make this precise. So recall that two maps. F comma G, F and G, the maps from M to R, I'm sorry, M to N, are said to be homotopic so in the smooth context. If there is a map, smooth map, F from M cross R to N, such that F sub zero, which is f restricted to m cross 0 is equal to f and f sub 1 which is m sub m restricted to f restricted to m cross 1 is equal to g so we need to show so we want to show that the maps induced by f and g on cohomology are the same when f and g are homotopy So the general idea is the following. First consider the projection map. So this is projection to the first coordinate, let's call it pi. So first show that pi upper star is an isomorphism. Now notice that pi has two sections. S0 and S1. So S0 of M is M comma 0 and S1 of M is M comma 1. And this shows that S0 upper star is equal to S1 upper star is equal to pi upper star inverse since pi is an isomorphism and from this we conclude that f upper star which is equal to so f we can write as f compose s0 upper star this is equal to s0 upper star 
compose f upper star which is equal to s1 upper star compose f upper star which is equal to f compose s1 upper star which is g upper star so thus we only need to show that pi upper star is an isomorphism pi upper star induces an isomorphism on cohomology Consider the map H from M cross R to M cross R defined by defined as So H is defined to be as zero composed by. So we will show, so for simplicity, let Y denote M cross R. So we will show that the map each upper star on complexes is homotopic to the identity. So this means that there are maps K sub i's such that so there are maps K. So let me just write this in a diagram. So this is K0, this is K1, this is K2, and so on, such that identity minus h upper star on comol I'm sorry, identity minus h upper star is equal to dk plus kd. 
Now from this, from this, it follows easily. that h upper star induces the identity. On cohomology. So, um, if, let's see how to see this, if omega is in the kernel of the differential, then we get. So I apply, we apply both sides of the operator to omega. Sorry, this should be dk plus kd. But since omega is in the kernel, this is just d of k omega. But this implies that omega is equal to h upper star omega plus something in the boundary, plus something which is in the image of d. This implies the class of omega is equal to the class of h upper star omega in cohomology. So let us now see how to define k. So we will use the following generalities. Let x and y be smooth manifolds. And let p1 and p2 be the projections. Then we have a map pi upper star omega x to omega x cross y. So this implies we have a map p1 upper star omega x direct sum p1 upper star omega y sorry this is p so p1 upper star pi upper star omega tip so let me just write it properly so one easily checks that this is an isomorphism of vector bundles. So uh, we can just choose coordinate neighborhoods. and check on u cross v. So on u cross v, we have coordinates x1, x2, 
x n comma y one y m that using the explicit description of the map. that it is an isomorphism. So this is one fact we need. The second, this is one generality we need. The second generality we need is, suppose V and W are finite dimensional vector spaces. Then, there are natural maps i equal to 1 to r exterior i v tensor exterior r minus i w to exterior r of v direction w and the description of this map is as follows for alpha in exterior iv and beta in exterior r minus iw the above map sends alpha tensor beta to alpha wedge beta And extend linearly. So this map is an isomorphism. There's also an easy check which is left to you. And as always, generalizing. this two bundles, we see that there is a natural isomorphism of bundles on X. Obviously, here E to X and F to X are vector bundles. So, combining these generalities, combining these, we see that exterior R of omega m cross R is equal to exterior R of omega m. P1 upper star Oops. But this is equal to P1 
one upper star exterior i omega m tensor sorry direct sum p1 upper star since exterior i omega r is equal to 0 for i strictly greater than 1. Moreover, since omega r is trivial, it follows that p1 upper star omega m tensor p2 upper star omega r is isomorphic to p1 upper star omega r minus 1 omega m so uh, we can put a dt over here to signify this okay so it will become clear how i mean this will become more clear uh, when we use it so let us compute the effect of h upper star from gamma m cross r to itself so let us understand this map So we wanted to compute r when r is equal to 1. So let u x1. So we recall how the pullback was defined for smooth maps. Let u x1 up to xn and v y1 up to y m be open subsets, be open subsets of Rn. Rn and Rm and let f from u to v be a smooth function <coughs> then we get a map at the level of tangent bundles which induces a map of bundles on you. 
and this map recall is simply given by tf that is since both tu and tv are trivial the trivializations so tu is trivialized by and TV is trivialized by T by TX T by T by J's. <laughs> uh, we can write F upper star the pullback as F upper star T by T by J's. and the map from tu to f upper star tv is given by Okay, so the dual map is given by P comma summation lambda i f upper star d x i d y i at P is mapped to P comma summation lambda i TF at P dual of TYI at F of P. So this is the map. over you so uh, these are easy computations which you can check yourself and uh, the main point is a section how the description of the the resulting description of the map on sections so let's explain how that looks like uh, section s over v is of the type G I D Y J D Y I and the pullback section U comma F upper star omega V is therefore given as G I compose F f upper star t y i and finally so let me enter on the next page
TF dual compose F upper star S is equal to summation GI compose F of TF dual of dyj this equal to gj compose f of tfj thus the map on sections is given by summation gi dyi gets mapped to gi compose f into dfj or uh, uh, dfj is fj is simply equal to yj compose f so Now let us compute H. H from M cross R to M cross R is okay. So let U X one Xn inside M be a coordinate open set. Then U cross R with coordinates X1 through Xn and T in M cross R is a coordinate open set. So since H of X1 through Xn and T is equal to x1 xn comma 0 it follows that let's see what the effect on sections of one one forms is summation j equal to 1 to n gj dxj plus summation plus no, no summation gn plus 1 dt gets mapped to summation j equal to 1 to n gj compose h d of xj compose h plus gn plus 1 compose H into D of decompose H but decompose H is is the constant map 0 and D of that is 0 so this back goes away and this is just equal to gj x1 through xn comma 0 and xj compose h is simply xj so from this we conclude that on the r forms the map h upper star Okay, I should I should write U. Sorry. Is given by
कर्नल डी एफ आई इज इक्वल टू आर जी सब आई डी एक्स आई प्लस कर्नल डी एफ आई इक्वल टू आर माइनस वन जी सब आई एच से कॉल्ड आई प्राइम डी टी वेच डी एक्स आई प्राइम गेट्स मैप टू समेशन कर्नल डी एफ आई इज इक्वल टू आर जी सब आई एक्स कॉमा जीरो डी एक्स सब आई सो नाउ लेट एस डिफाइन के So look leaf as follows. On forms of the type G D X I define K of Is equal to zero on forms of the type G D T M H D X I. Define K of is just equal to the function 0 to t g of x1 through xn we just integrate out the t this functions times dxi and then now we extend k linearly k linearly Now, if we change coordinates, so because of this observation earlier, because of this observation, it suffices to add the fact that So because of 1 and 2, it suffices to define k for forms of this type. So we have to make an observation if we change coordinates, if we choose a, if we change coordinates to let's say u x1 prime xn prime so what I want to say is if we change coordinates on u if we take a new set of coordinates then we get new coordinates on q cross r namely x1 prime to xn prime and t
and it is clear that the definition of k remains the same. So thus, k is defined globally. Uh, let us check that k gives a homotopy between identity and h upper star. Again, this check can be done locally. And on forms of the type, G D X I and G T T H D X I. So suppose omega is a form of the type G D X I, then H upper star omega is equal to G of X comma zero D X I. T of k of omega is equal to 0 since k of omega is 0. And uh, k of t of omega is equal to k of summation j equal to 1 to n dg by dxj, dxj, which dxi, plus dg by dt, dt, which dxi. This is equal to 0 plus k, so that's integral 0 to t, dg by dt of dt to dxi which is equal to g of x comma t minus g of x comma 0 times dxi. So thus identity minus h upper star omega is equal to omega minus h upper star omega which is equal to g dxi minus g of x comma 0 dxi which is precisely equal to dk plus k t omega apply to omega. Now let's check on forms of the second type. Omega is equal to g dt which dxi. So then h upper star omega is 0. t of k omega is equal to t of integral 0 to t g of x1 xn comma t dt dxi 
this is equal to summation j equal to 1 to n integral 0 to t tg by dxi dxj dxi plus the derivative with respect to t which is just g of x comma t g of x on the other hand k of t omega is equal to k so when we take d omega we get uh, summation j equal to 1 to n dg by d xj dxj which d t which dxi plus the second term is 0 because dt which dt is 0 this is equal to minus so minus k of summation j equal to 1 to n dg which dxj dt dxj dxi which is equal to minus of j equal to 1 to n integral 0 to t dg by dxj dt dxj uh dxi so this implies that dk plus kd of omega is equal to g of x comma t dt uh dx I, which is equal to identity minus h plus star omega so this implies indeed identity minus h plus star is equal to dk plus kd which implies that as we saw before h plus star induces the identity Indeed, this is the identity map on cohomology. Now, H was defined to be S not composed pi. This implies pi upper star composed S not upper star is identity. And on the other hand, we also have since S not is a section pi compose s0 is equal to identity this implies s0 upper star composed pi upper star is also identity this implies that pi upper star is an isomorphism so this implies homotopic maps as we explained earlier induce the same map on cohomology so let us use this discussion to compute some examples so notice that rn is isomorphic to rn minus 1 cross r and we can look at the projection map to Rn minus 1. And uh, this implies 
that pi up a star from the cohomology Rn minus 1 to the cohomology of Rn is an isomorphism. So therefore by induction Hi Rn R is 0 for all I strictly get n 0 and H naught since Rn is connected is equal to R. So in particular, so this is not this was not clear for in particular. If omega is an R form on Rn, then T omega is equal to zero if and only if omega is equal to T of eta for an R form r minus 1 form eta so the next example is uh, the cohomology of the plane minus the origin. So, so the idea here is that the plane minus the origin it deforms in a smooth way to S one. So. Let i from the circle to r2 minus 0 denote the natural map, the natural inclusion, denote the inclusion. Then we want to show that i up a star is an isomorphism. For this, so first use a function g from R to R, which is smooth. Increasing and g of x is equal to zero. for x less than or equal to 0 and g of x is equal to 1 for x greater than or equal to 1. So the graph of g it looks like this. So g is a smooth function. So then we define a homotopy So R2 minus the origin cross R to R2 minus the origin by P comma T is sent to G of T into P by norm P plus 1 minus G of T into P. So let's call this map F. So F has the following properties. F 
zero, which is f restricted to R two minus the origin cross zero is equal to the identity. Uh, for all t, f sub t, when we restrict it to S1, this is equal to the identity of S1. Uh, that is clear because if p belongs to S1, then now p is equal to 1. And the third property is that f at 1 of R2 minus the origin is contained inside S1. So uh, then, so what we have is using the third property, the map R2 minus 0, 0, F1, it factors like this. So let's call this H, and this is the inclusion I. So, since F1 and F0 are homotopic, this implies F1 induces the identity On cohomology. But F1 is equal to I compose H, which implies H upper star compose I upper star is the identity. This implies that H upper star is surjective. But we also have S one. S1, this i, and this composite is identity. This implies that H compose i upper star is equal to identity. This implies i upper star compose H upper star. This implies H upper star is injective. So this proves that H upper star and so I upper star is an isomorphism. So more generally, If I from A to M is a submanifold, and we have F from M cross I to M such that F zero is identity. Ft restricted to n is the identity on n for all t. And third, f1 restricted to n is contained in n. Then the same argument above.
shows that. The inclusion. I have a star induces an isomorphism on cohomology. So we will stop here.